fan base is following this legacy and they've squandered it at every single fucking turn. Do <laughs> not mock me. That's you mocking. work for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fam, I am Christian, curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And I'm Michael, the thing on top of Christian's glasses. <laughs> They're called clips, you insensitive clips. Prick. clips. No, actually, I like those a lot because James Dean used to have them, and I always thought they were yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, a big James Dean fan. Really? Ah, ah, ah. What were his last words? Oh, my. He has to see me. If you don't know, James Dean died in a Porsche, and he was going around a bend. And a big truck was coming, and the last words James Dean said as the truck was coming was, he has to see me. So tragic. Oh, my. Hey, anyways, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? I'm too sad to talk about what I I don't think I've ever told you this. I worked at a place once. I don't want to give away names or anything, but I worked at a what? place once. I worked at a place outside of here. Walk? I had a job. I never did that. <laughs> walk. 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 Oh, I walk every day. Yeah, that I walk every day. I worked at this place, and Christian always makes fun of me because I will always... Say the saddest. I'll just say something very sad. Yeah, I'll sad. be in a great mood. I'll be driving, just enjoying <laughs> life, talking about business and, and philosophy. Like, oh. Michael's like, you know what that great story reminds me of? The one time <laughs> that my best friend was <laughs> like, what the yeah. f***? Why would you bring me down like that? He's like, well, it popped into my I head. Mean, isn't that horrible? <laughs> popped into my head. And if I didn't tell you, I feel like I'd be lying about it. So <laughs> the, the story of that, though, is I had a boss that would do that, too. Me and all my coworkers, work hadn't like started yet. We are all early, so we were just sitting in the office, all chatting, and the office was like really cozy, there were couches everywhere. We're all laughing, and my boss walks in. <laughs> One of the employees' names was Payson. Everybody's laughing, joking around, and she walks in. She's like, good morning, Michael, good morning, Payson. Oh, Payson. Did you hear about the huge flood in Payson, Arizona? Tons of children dead. It is brutal. Oh my god. And everybody's god. like, oh my Thanks. god, I didn't hear about that. And she's like, oh. I, it was horrible. Also, I have to get a mug with your name on it. I have one for Michael, not yours. And then go <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> Today we're talking about four main things. One of them being a story at the end about how I got fired from a job because of Rolex. Can't wait to tell you about that. But, shucks. shucks. Then I got this one. All yeah. about Rolex. But today we're talking about the new Royal Oak 43mm Offshore with the first ever in-house movement in the offshore. Yep. We are talking about IWC's Big Pilots Tour Beyond Perpetual Calendar watch and what i was gonna say about that watch is it's not complicated enough yeah right it's not busy right enough. right it's also not big enough <laughs> yeah iwc because that i added a reimagination of the winchester repeating rifle i added a gun because a lot of people seem to have an issue with two men who are friends sitting next to each other winchester tin tin does that remind you of you remember no winchester tin no no big daddy Big no, Daddy. no, no, not Big Daddy. I'm sorry, Mr. Deeds. Mr. Mr. Deeds. Deeds. That was a great movie. That was yeah. the town the reporter who was undercover said said she was from. Oh. Winchestertonville or something. Winchesterton. Dude, with all the work you do in the day, it's a miracle you can watch all these movies. <laughs> Okay, so this is Royal Oak's new 43 millimeter offshore. It, yeah. this, the design isn't different. The inside of it is really different. Mm. That's where everything goes a little crazy. And this is actually a rare reference from 1999. Yeah, it's nice. Offshore. I actually do like that a lot. Yeah, me too. I love the like the gold bezel and stuff like that with the stainless bracelet. Yeah. It's so cool. You know, the whole like Joe Genta hated the offshore and everything. Yeah. I could see the modern one him hating but this one I was like ah, no I still think no, that's kind of cool. no again like you, it's a massive change you know but say? I mean do you know what I'm going to say can you quote me at this point on this issue no I can I know you your opinion you I can't quote you you clearly don't pay attention you clearly don't listen to me you at clearly all. don't listen to me and you get a demotion <laughs> <laughs> to what <laughs> let, let, let me remember this come Christmas bonus time first in command second <laughs> No, now you're third. <laughs> to who? Tito? Yeah, Tito, my grandfather. <laughs> I'm going to put him in the spot. I'm going to knock you down. I'm going to put him up. We all laugh next week. <laughs> Just an ancient man sitting here. As you're like, come on, Tito. Come Tito, on. Tito, come on. Have an opinion. Good, good. Right, you want an opinion? Vanilla ice cream tastes like milk. <laughs> I don't know why people have it. That's an opinion. <laughs> Okay, anyways, what are you gonna say? It's a perversion, right? The entire right, the right. entire brilliance of the Royal Oak was it's you know it's kind of like it's it's how dece how deceiving it was this this dichotomy, right? Uh, from from one angle or from one angle, it's it's industrial and 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 just aggressive and masculine, and then from the profile, it's 
elegant, right? That was the brilliance of that watch, right? It, 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 it's even more brilliant, I think, than the Nautilus in that way, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's just these total opposite worlds, but coexisting, I mean, in perfect harmony. Right. Whereas the Nautilus lends itself to being more elegant, even in its, you know, even in its design. So, you know, I think that people say that the, that the Nautilus is a, is a, you know, better royal oak. It's, it's the more refined, you know, it's the second generation, right? Because Genta went on to do the Nautilus after the royal oak. But um, I look at it as as kind of the the opposite. I, I look at it as the Royal Oak was the true, true stroke of brilliance, and then the Nautilus was great. I mean, I love the Nautilus, God. I mean, I'm, you know, but um, it doesn't achieve the same height of, um, oh, it's the height that the Royal Oak, the Royal Oak does. So then when, when it was lost in the offshore, because it was so much thicker and so much more obvious, right? It, it loses that hole, but look closer still. Mm -hmm. Then that's that's why I believe Gerald Genta hated it, and that's why a lot of people hate it. But so a Christmas bonus. Because <laughs> we haven't talked about that. I was trying so hard to not laugh through that. <laughs> You're a... I was like, that'd be really funny. No, yeah, no. I knew the idea that you had and the thoughts. I didn't know how you were going to say it, but perversion is the word. But yeah, I can see, like, looking at the modern one, definitely. The other one, too, obviously. But still, I'm like, eh, that one's kind of cool. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? The big deal is that there has there's an in-house movement, which is still weird to hear that, like, AP yeah, of all people used JLC in here for a while. They used a Blanc Pan movement. But, and they even, they had their own movement, but they added a chronograph module. That's what I'm it. saying. It was, mo it was modular, yeah. yeah. So, not an integrated movement. So, it's a, that was like a big, big deal for a long, long time. Yeah, right. So yeah. now they have their own. But even, you know, Patek Philippe up until the 5270, I believe, uh, that was a Lamont. The, the, those movements were all the perpetual counter chronograph family. So the 1518, the, you know, 27, uh, everything. I mean, you know, yeah, 30, yeah. 3970, you know, 2499, everything, you know, 5970 even. Those were all based on, on, on a Lamontian movement. Mm -hmm. Those weren't mm -hmm. in house Patek, you know, movements. So, you know, in house has become like a. Um, it now has become like a like a buzzword, you know. It doesn't yeah, necessarily sure. mean better, sure. um, but it was disappointing for a while that AP didn't have an in-house chronograph. I feel like for a while it was acceptable if a brand like AP or a different brand is like, well, we we get the best movement. Like Rolex for a while didn't have their own in-house chronograph or anything like that, and now it's shifting to no, it's not acceptable. That's kind of embarrassing that you use someone else, even if it is JLC. Yeah. I don't know. You're right. You are. You are. Cat I wasn't disagreeing with you. I'm. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just wondering if I agree with just the cultural like implications. Same. There. Same. I don't. I. I, I really don't. Um. For for some. You know. It depends on the brand, right? Like. I do not think Cartier needs their own in-house movement. I think that Cartier should have Piaget movements. Yeah. Know? Right. Right. Or something like that. Yeah. You know. There's no reason. Right. Cartier isn't isn't doing a great job designing watches. Yeah, so they right. should stop focusing on. Movements, right, right. Like, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. mind your own business first, and then once you got your house in order, then you could then you could talk about something else. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. yeah. But I find the same thing about just like philosophy with like people and how they, like how they do. Like, some people like they need to be good at everything. I'm like, okay, yeah, you can be good. Good luck. Good luck being good at everything. Anyways, 70 hour power reserve, ceramic bearings. It's a it's a modern movement. That's not a classical 38 like, but heritage style. And it's 37,000. Okay. One is that. What do you think about that? Thirty-seven thousand. You wouldn't spend thirty-seven thousand dollars. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so would you? No. Okay. Cool. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. I mean, that's a different, yeah, yeah. A different conversation. Yeah, I wouldn't spend thirty-seven thousand. Yeah. Right. Um, out of the AP catalog. Yep. Take hype out if you can. If you okay. can. If you can. If you can figure that out. Right? It's <laughs> yep. almost impossible, right? right? right. It's like right. it's impossible to do. But what would you get right now? You know the answer to that. Uh, the white ceramic perpetual. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is what's funny it. is when Michael asked me a question about him, I know the answer about his opinions. Yeah. <laughs> but when I asked Michael to tell me my, he doesn't. Remember. I'm like, uh, offshore is too big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. You can ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Um, yeah. If you had to choose. If you had to choose. <laughs> What, what watch did you get from AP? First of all, I would like. Th there are a bunch of watches that I would absolutely love. I love the 38 millimeter chronograph. A friend of mine just bought one. I'm mm -hmm. super jealous. Um, but but I have better hair, so it doesn't matter. True. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, um, I love the. I think they're like 37 millimeter. I believe it's 37 uh, millimeter uh, yellow gold Royal Oaks with the blue dials. Those are really really beautiful. Yep. Uh, love that watch. But I really love. Um, I mean, obviously, I really love the white gold chronograph with the ice blue dial. Yep. Um, I, you know, it's like, it's funny, like, 
there are plenty of and this is this is like you know kind of like taking that my question and making it even a little bit more meta like taking hype out mm -hmm. i like those watches and would buy them in two seconds yeah of course but now how difficult it is to get them out when i actually go buy them right now because right now, if an, if an AD called me up and was like, "Hey, Christian, like I, you talked about this on YouTube, like we, we, we know we have one of these, we'd like to, we'd like you to allocate it to you. Would you like it?" I said, "Yeah, done, 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 done." done. Amen. Because because I would never get the opportunity. I'm not going to get the opportunity for a while. Right. 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 Whereas if they were available, the urgency wouldn't be there. Yeah, of course. So you know what I mean, like I that's don't know, kind of the game, tough. though. Hey, we have one. You have to come get it right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. done. Committed. Cool, cool, done. Cool, cool. And yeah. I would never think twice about it. Right. Never. Right. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Speaking hey. of which, I actually kind of want to f***ing pee. I'm, really? I know. I know. I hate to be that guy. I, I, I hate to be like the guy that wants everything. Because all the things that I buy are, I mean, you know, generally speaking, are not that popular. You yeah, know? Yeah. I don't really like things that like a lot of people like, you know? Yeah. Um, but AP? Yeah. Good. Like, if you really want something, you can ask a favor. Like, you know, I, I could, in theory, probably get one of these watches. Like, you know, I could at retail, probably, you know? Yeah. But you have to really call in a lot of favors. Yeah. And, like, do you want to be the guy that used his favor on a watch? Right. When you're in the business. Right. You know, when right. you're not, like, yeah, that's your favor, you know? But when you're in the business, like, I feel like, you know, it's probably not the best call. Like, oh, he wanted... He wanted a watch. He wanted a watch. Yeah, that's not... Oh. That's not good. Yeah. Right. That's all. That's it. Then he, he hung he, up. He used the opportunity. <laughs> then he screamed and hung yeah, up. <laughs> yeah. He used the opportunity with me on the phone, meaning me as the AP executive, yeah, yeah, yeah. to talk about his allocation for a watch and not important business. Which Ooh. is what we were looking for. Yeah. He's mm. not really like he, maybe his priorities are not, the, you know, I don't right. know. IWC's Big Pilots Watch Perpetual Calendar Tourbillion Edition La Petite Prince. Le Petit Ponce. La Petit Ponce. This is um, this is a massive, hulking perpetual calendar tourbillon yeah. watch. Antoine de Saint Exploré. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how to say it. I apologize. The story goes, or not even the story. His legacy goes that he was a pilot and then helped out the French Air Force, did all this, but was really at the end of the day a writer. His most famous book is La Petite Pont. Perfect. Thank you. And he ended up dying. Yep. Obviously, that's why this is such a big like tribute thing. And IWC has paid tribute ever since. Yep. So this is the cover of the book. Yep. And then, sorry. No, when short Le Petit Prince story. Um, when I so when I was a little boy, um, my godfather, my uncle, uh, was like spent like a couple months in Paris. Yep. So he brought me back the Le Petit Prince book. Right really? and a Liberty Prince. So when I was in Paris just uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I brought I bought a Liberty uh, Prince book that I would in theory one day give to a Whoa. child. So I have a Liberty Prince like wow. hidden away, and I thought that would be nice. That is very nice because I could say you know I was thinking about you even then, pal. You weren't even existing. You weren't even existing. Weren't I was always here. thinking about you. Wow, that's classy. Kind of sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyways, this is IWC's. Version of yeah, that. Yeah, this is you a stupid watch. It. But the back rotor, I like that detail. Yeah, that's amazing. The back rotor is amazing. That is also on. This is there's a moon phase, so that is also on the moon. You can't see it. In also picture, very cool. That's a great detail. That's a great detail. Other than that, though. Yeah, I mean, I. What is you know, this? I love the Petit Prince uh, um, collection. Yep. I think it's great. Yep. Um, I, I I love the Big Pilot. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I have no complications with Big Pilots. I think the Tourbillon is is a use a, a useless addition yes. um, to this watch. I don't even like it aesthetically. I think it's I think it, I think it sucks. Yep. Um, it's it's it, you know, and, and in many ways these complications thing. totally undermine the idea of the Big Pilot. Yep. The Big Pilot is 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 a pilot's watch that is meant to be extremely legible, uh, non complicated. Uh, the idea is literally to see the time. Right. 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 So the rest of this to me is, um, it is it is the uh, uh, unnatural marriage of of history and modern like luxury demand. And to me, it's a it's a this is a this is a perversion. Speaking of perversion, this is a perversion. And this is the hulking size of that watch. Yeah. How big is it? Uh, forty six millimeters by yeah. I think sixteen millimeters. Yeah. It's yeah by sixteen millimeters. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's crazy. No, it's, it's too big. It's one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. One hundred seventy thousand dollars. Eighteen carat armor gold. Which someone is will buy. Yeah, someone oh, will there's buy. There's only fifty of them. Yeah, they'll all sell out. I mean, I have yeah. no doubt about that. So God bless IWC. Whatever. I wish nothing but the best. But I even just, just hundred meters water resistance. Yeah. Weird. Perpetual calendar. Yeah. We all know about that. But yeah. then one hundred and sixty eight hour power reserve. It just seems like in yeah. every direction. Yeah. 
people got a yes. Yeah, like there's exactly. a team of ten, and yeah. every person that threw an idea out, they're like, yeah, done, done, got it, done, yeah, done, done. And they're like, really? Yeah. Whatever. So that's that. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like that. I think that that was a, uh, I think that's a miss. I really am rooting for IWC. I love IWC. I genuinely love their brand. I don't own one. I would own one in two seconds. I recommend them all the time to people, all of the time. Yep. The blue ceramic, uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yep. I recommended it. I recommended it three times this week. Like yeah. Or last two weeks, let's say. Right. I love it. Uh, big fan of the brand. I just, I just, um, I don't know. I am frustrated with a lot of the direction they've taken. A lot of their ads have really, really sucked. Um, they, they really, I just don't know people with any emotional attachment to the brand, and that's a shame. Not, and it's not the shame on the people's end. It's a shame on the brand's end. Uh, they've been given a fantastic opportunity to build, you know, this like this fan, fan base, this following, this legacy, and they've squandered it at every single. Turn. Do <laughs> not mock me. That's you mocking. work for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Before we get into Winchester, Tinville, Ville, repeating rifle by way of Golden Boy, I don't know where the fuck you're going with that. Yep. All right? There's a trick to it. There's a trick there. Wristwatch check. I am wearing a 34 millimeter Rolex Oyster Date with one of the most insane dials I've seen in the wild. Wild. You told me originally blue, and now it is a gray yep. with a linen texture. Exactly right. It's wild in the light, in the natural light, especially. That is a faded Rolex dial is probably one of the most hallmark vintage wants ever in anything. Yeah. Like all everybody ever wants, or not all everybody ever wants, but a worn down Rolex dial is. About as good as you can get. With yeah, I vintage. agree. There, there are, they're not. As far as like famous, famous watches are concerned, like yeah. to me, it's Rolex and then like Omega Seamaster. Yeah, like those yep. are watches that were luxury but also meant to be worn. Yep. So when you do see them with patina, it's like, oh, that that was worn. They, they did it. And it's it's not. You can't get a distressed dial. No. No. It's not a distressed pair of jeans or anything like that. This is literally. It's just been worn for so long. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. Yeah. I, I love that watch. Uh, that watch is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. Um, I found that watch um, in the middle of America. I bought that from someone like somewhere in like Idaho or something like that. Really? Yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. It was really, really cool. You know what that kind of is weirdly signifies is Rolex's old image versus their new image. Yeah. Oh, completely. Like, are you going right. to find like a modern day 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 in Idaho? Right. No, right. but you'll find a lot of these yeah. because Isn't this is a tool watch. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a really good point. Uh, I'm wearing a vintage Omega Seamaster. Speaking of Seamasters, mm -hmm. this was, you know, speaking of crazy dials, this is wild. This is a frost dial. They don't do this anymore. Um, they used to. It's, it's stunning, but only in, in very few watches. Yep. This is a jumbo example, big, big fat case, uh, you know, beveled uh, lugs, brush case everywhere. Um, I think this is one of the most wearable Seamasters ever manufactured. Yep. I love this watch. Um, it also is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. This is, if you have a big wrist and you want to get into vintage, this is one of your best entries in. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. And um, if you already have a watch that you, you're not looking to get another watch at the moment, take a look at the Theo and Harris leather strap shop yes. because we've got a full selection of leather straps yep. from a uh, from all over the world, from from Italy, from France, and from America, that uh, you really ought to take a look at because they're all, I mean, they're all really premium quality. And they have, which you talked to me actually at Starbucks once about glaze of leather. Mm. The, the, the straps that you offer are either matte, kind of regular, mm. or glaze, which is, I feel like, a level that you don't see in other Yeah. Brands. Like exactly. the Batman especially is no, it's pure warm. matte, water-resistant yeah. leather strap. And you have like, the Churchill, which is this total glaze. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I that's actually cool. have my, my Seamaster in my pocket with the Mojave on it. Oh, no way. Yeah, look how great that has aged in. Isn't oh, that yeah. beautiful? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It looks oh, amazing. It's pretty scratched up now, huh? No, it's, uh, it's like the crystal. Yeah, weird, right? Yeah, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, anyway, beautiful, beautiful straps. Beautiful stuff. And watches. Yeah. Take a look in the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. The Unnamed Society presents the reimagination of the Winchester repeating rifle by way of Golden Boy. This is a clock. It's not a gun. It's not a gun. See, even when you think you know where I'm going... You don't. No, neither do where I. Where does it tell the time? On the side, right here. Let me get a little closer in right there. Boom. Wow. I thought it was really cool. There's really not a lot yeah, to it's say. It's totally about it. illegible. You have to get really, really close. Right? Oh, when? Yeah, when would you ever like? First off, I don't know where you put that because you don't hang it up like a gun because then you can't see the time. It's tiny. But I just thought it was cool. I think the Winchester repeating rifle is really cool. That's the Butch Cassidy, the oh, Buffalo okay. Bill gun. Gotcha. Like that's the gun that won the West or what they say. Gotcha. So I thought that was really cool. Just wanted to show it to you. Wow. Yeah. How much is it? Um, I have no idea. Put a fortune. I put time to die at the top because that's what I would say if that I had that hanging up. 
Put a big sign. Time to die. Yeah. People are like, that's a beautiful gun. I'm like, oh, it's a clock. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Very cool. Yeah, so I think that's cool. That's that's really all I had to say. About How did Rolex lose your job? This is a it's a weird story for a very weird reason. I cold called a guy one day and that photographed watches and sold them online mm -hmm. and I said, Hey, I can take photos of your watches if you want. Like his were clearly just like they were literally if you gave me fifty watches and you just spread them out on a table and you went like this, mm -hmm. that's what the pictures were. Mm -hmm. So I cold called this guy and he sent me one watch just to I guess to see if I was gonna steal the watch. And I photographed and sent it back and it was all throughout college actually, so almost four years. I would have like 50, 60 watches at a time, wow. photograph the watches and just like plow through them. And then this guy was always great, like kind of told me what to look for when looking for watches and stuff like that. And then I photographed a Rolex one day and I he said he shipped it out or like someone bought it, so can you ship it here for me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Always great relationship, always totally fine. Never heard his voice, never talked to him in real life. He says, send this Rolex out and I say, okay, great. And then I texted him and I was like, hey, just so you know, like I didn't get to send the Rolex out today. I'll send it out tomorrow. This is after I've probably done. You're also doing a favor. Like, yeah, exactly. This isn't my job. This is also probably after I've done 500 watches, a ton of watches. Like things have been coming in out much better than like a Rolex Datejust, like grail items. And all of a sudden I get a phone call from this number I don't know. Never gave him my number or anything like that. And it's just this guy with an incredibly heavy accent screaming like before I even answer the phone just like F you like a full blown like get all you're fired you're fired send all the watches back like screaming he's screaming what? that I stole from him and I was like did a watch not get somewhere what watch are you talking about and it was just like a regular 1600 smooth dial and he said I stole it and like the customer was mad and like this none of it made sense because it was probably within like two hours of me saying like I didn't get to what it in the world? screaming and then for weeks after just sending me all these like horrible emails being like if you don't send me my watches back like i'll sue you all this and that and i was like dude i don't even have them i'll send back yeah right just going ballistic oh my so God. my my theory is yeah. he was just looking for a reason to fire me right because he gave me a stupidly good rate i was making more photographing one watch than editing for theo and harris i believe that Isn't that insane? Believe <laughs> yeah well yeah yeah I believe but that. still i was just like these numbers don't add up. Like, I was making bank. He'd send wow. me 50 watches, and I'd be like, are you kidding? Okay, fine. Wow. So I think he just, like, didn't want to say, like, I can't afford you or, like, find a reason to, like, right. explain it otherwise than this, like, hyper-masculine thing. Wow, what a mess that is. Screaming. It was insane. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. That's so weird. No, yeah. I mean, I, I've never been uh, never been fired because of Rolex. You really? No. How many jobs no. have you had outside of this? One. Outside, <laughs> outside of Theo and Harris, how many yeah. jobs have you had? Yeah, one. Oh, one. I yeah, thought you said what? I worked at a shoe store um, by me in town. How wrong does and, that feel? Uh, oh, I, I, I live three blocks from the shoe store now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I do better than the shoe store. <laughs> um, and uh, no, they were nice. They were they were really, really nice people. Um, it, the, the, like, the stock downstairs was a mess. Like, it was just a f***ing mess, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I had no interest in looking for stuff. I, 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 it's, it's funny. I even, well, like, it's disgusting down there. Even when, like, <laughs> even, like, when, a, when, like, a woman specifically, because they carry, like, purses and stuff, can you grab something for my purse? No. I'll just, I'll get your, I'll go get your purse, but yeah. I'm not going to grab something What's from in me. there? I don't like looking for things like that. I, I always, like that. even if someone says, can you go get this from my purse or my bag? No. I'm like, what do you think? I'm a creep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't think it like that. I'm just like, no, you know where your shit is. I, I'll just, I'll just bring you your bag. So it was very, it was like, that's a very small version of like going down into the stock room yeah. and seeing all these boxes and being like, no. No. Wow. No. So I would. So I would look for a while, yeah. and the customers would be upset. <laughs> one, two minutes. One, two <laughs> minutes. And uh, and then one, you know, one day the again they were really nice people. This is <laughs> I feel bad, but you know they knew that I they knew that I couldn't work there anymore. They knew that. Really. And yeah, they knew that. And um, I just couldn't grasp fairly simple concepts. <laughs> You know, it was amazing. I can just, amazing. I can just see some guys. He wants a pair of wingtips, and you're like, wingtips, really? Yeah. What do you do for work? Wingtips for that? Oh, interesting. No, I, I was. Are you planning on going in Scottish <laughs> marshes anytime soon? I'm I was confused. good at like the sales part, but it yeah. was everything else that was bringing people up. No good. You know, it was a mess. So uh, anyway, instead of firing me because I, I was nice and they didn't have the heart to, they told me they were closing. 
So when I went home and told my mom that they were closing, she went nuts because she's like, you're f- <laughs> lying to me. You must have quit, you lazy uh, son of a blah, 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 blah. And they're still open. That was, I mean, they, they, all, wow. they fired me. Slow you know, closing whatever. process probably, right? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. literally, I mean, almost 10 years ago. Wow. Like eight years ago, nine years wow. ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the only other job I've ever had apart from TNH. Wow. You ever swing by there and buy shoes? I would never go in there again. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Oh, my I'm God. so embarrassed. They were very nice. They people. made it more embarrassing by saying we're closing. I, I didn't mean the, the, the right answer would have just been a Larry David approach. That's what I would have done. You know, I would have been like, listen, this sucks. It doesn't work. It's not good. You know, yeah. you know it doesn't work. You, you got to go. Right? I mean, we both know. We both yeah. know yeah. this isn't working. And You'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're fired. Right? I mean, I shouldn't even have to fire you. We should know this is You can't find his lunchbox. It's in yeah. the stock room. Yeah, well, <laughs> They're like, okay, God. get out, get out. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Wow. Yeah. So, that's that's the only time I've ever gotten fired. Well. Yeah. For... Well, first time, but won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, business. <laughs> no, business. No, friend. No, business. No, friend. No, friend. <laughs> Everyone's like, that's handshake thing we shut up <laughs> blah, no. oh my god that is uh that's about it all right sounds good adios folks oh check out the theo and harris watch shop theo and harris watch shop check it out immediately